Welcome to the Big Heart Business Show. My name is Carrie Shepard, business strategist, philanthropist, and believer. I'm on a mission to help entrepreneurs be more, do more, and give more beyond their business, and to do it with more heart and less hustle. Each week on the show, I'll be here with a message or interview from a powerhouse entrepreneur that has built their business by giving back. Together, we will inspire you, fuel you, and get you going with simple action steps and strategies to grow your purpose-driven business. Our philosophy here is that we can change the world one big heart business at a time. Let's get started. This is episode number six of the Big Heart Business Show. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Tracy Robinson. Tracy is the owner of three small businesses, Spry Art Photography and the co-owner of Camp Pixel Project. It's a graphic design and photography camp for children and co-owner of Mod Mavens and Co, a small business consulting and branding company. Tracy lives and breathes light and color and can't even drive around the neighborhood without envisioning a shot here and a shot there. Tracy's photography has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, and she won first place in a, nation, a nationwide Amazon.com photography contest and recently shot the cover of Review It magazine. Tracy is a wife, a mom of five, a reluctant cook, a live music junkie, and a self-proclaimed book nerd. Love it, that's so super fun. Welcome, Tracy. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm super excited to talk about all your businesses and passions. And um, I would love for you to kind of share with our audience, how did you get started in photography and um, opening up your first and then second and third businesses? So, excuse my husband there. Everybody's home for spring break and he works for the school district. So he's home too. So we've got all seven of us at home. <laughs> nice um, and cozy. <laughs> Um, so I actually have a degree and a master's degree in business and I was working in HR for a consulting company um, and photography was just something, but I was, I quickly became obsessed with it. Um, I was sitting in my desk at my consulting company and all I wanted to think about was taking, photo was taking pictures and going out there. Um, and so I very quickly taught myself um, how to do it. And so I started a photography business. It started with um, people just saw pictures I took and they asked me to take pictures of um, their kids. And at first I was like, what, you want me to take pictures of you um, and your family? And, um, and then after, you know, several months, I was like, well, I guess I need a website because I had more people that started asking me. Um, and so at the same, you know, at this time I had four kids, I was working full time. Um, and I would get up at 4.30 and I would work on pictures um, after I started this website. And within a year of me starting the company, um, I was able to leave the corporate world and um, just do photography full time. That's awesome. So really taking a passion and, and building your business around that. Right. And I'm completely self-taught. And like I said, I was totally obsessed. I read everything I could. I watched every video I could. Uh, I was on the web, on the internet all the time, trying to learn new tips and tricks and stuff. Um, and I'm still learning to this day. Um, I've been working with a wedding photographer the last six months to learn some advanced wedding, um, or not wedding techniques, but some advanced lighting techniques. So it's been a constant journey. Um, and I started back in 2008, so I've had a business since 2000, about 2008, 2009 is when I left the um, corporate world and was able to go full-time with photography. That's awesome. And I love that you share about, you know, having to make some of those sacrifices, having to get up really early to work on the business to be able to transition into doing it full time. Were right. there any other sacrifices that you had to make or what did that look like when you were juggling both your kind of side hustle and corporate job and a family? <laughs> yeah, well, um, luckily I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that doesn't need a lot of sleep. So <laughs> getting up at 4.30 uh, wasn't too much of a sacrifice for me because it was something I really wanted to do. Mm. Um, and something I was excited about and something um, I couldn't wait to get up and do. Um, and then on the weekends, it was just so awesome to me that, you know, I'm the self-taught photographer. I didn't go to school for it and people were actually hiring me. So it was very exciting. Um, and so um, that's just what I did. It, it, I, I can't say it was a whole lot of sacrifice because I was so excited about it. Um, so it was more, you know, fun and a hobby for me in the beginning. 
That's awesome. And your work has a real distinct style to it. Like you said, you really like color and light and, you know, it seems like most of your pictures are really vibrant. Uh, I'd love for you to talk about how did you find your style and, and how did you get into what I would kind of consider almost like a niche part of photography? Because I think that's something that a lot of, especially newer business owners kind of struggle with is how do I really stand out in the market? How do I kind of create that, that part of the market when there's, I mean, obviously there's tons of photographers, but you have a real specialty in the way that you, you, you produce your photography, I guess. <clears throat> well, I'd say it probably just, Develop kind of organically. You know, I started out only wanting to photograph children, um, but quickly realized that people were hiring me to photograph families. Like most people wanted the whole family in the pictures. Um, and so I had to learn how to do that. And then high school seniors was something else um, people wanted me to do. I, I Once I started doing that, I loved it. Um, there's so much fun to work with. They have the best clothes. Um, hair and makeup, it's so, so much fun. They're really excited to get their pictures done. Um, so as far as, you know, my brand, that really just developed organically. It was something I was good at. And um, so I decided um, kind of early on that that was going to be my brand. And it's also because customer, my clients found me. They're like, oh, we, we like your pictures because they're so bright and, um, you know, your style is so bright and we're kind of afraid of color and you can kind of help us break out of that. Um, and so I, once I started hearing that over and over from my clients and I decided, you know what, I need to go with this. I need to make that my brand. That needs to be my niche. Um, now I did have someone hire me recently. Um, I had taught her at a workshop that I did, a photography workshop. And she said, I love your work, but my house is very neutral and your stuff would, I think it would just stand out too much. Can you do like more neutral pictures? I was like, sure. I can do anything. Um, and that's fine. I mean, if you want to pay me, I'll do it. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, those people hire me because of my use of color. Mm -hmm. That's really great. So you, you're, you're getting started, you're going out there, you're getting into action. But then I think what's really important and kind of a takeaway, I would say, is listening to your customers. What yes. is it about what they liked and then really figuring out it kind of along the way. And I think that's a great point is that you're going to get that clarity by going out there and, and doing the work, not just Absolutely. sitting home and trying to figure out this perfect business plan, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So what would you say are some of the other kind of secrets to success specifically in your photography business? And then we can kind of dive into the other two companies that you've created as well. Uh, you have to, you have to be a self-starter. I mean, I, I did have 10 years in the business world um, before I started this. So I had that experience um, as far as communicating and marketing and that type of things Not you know, I do have the business degrees. Um, you have to be self-starter. Uh, you also cannot compare yourself to other people. If you're constantly comparing yourself, then that's just a recipe for disaster because there's always going to be somebody in one area that's better than you. Um, and if you can constantly are comparing yourself, um, then you're going to go, you're going to go nowhere. You need to concentrate on yourself. Um, but yes, definitely you have to be a self-starter. You have to go out there and find the business. You can't let the business come to you. Mm, such a good point. And how do you use technology as far as finding your clients? Do you do a lot of in-person networking or do you use Facebook ads? Tell us a little bit about what that client attraction process looks like for you. Um, I would say I probably do a little bit of everything. I, Facebook has been helpful. Um, it, it's, it's more helpful when my clients share their pictures and then their friends see them and um, say who was the photographer. And then I kind of let my clients do the advertising for me. Um, so Facebook in that way has been very helpful. Um, you know, Instagram branding. If you look at my Instagram page, um, you, you'll see that there's a very definite brand. Um, when you look at all the pictures together, um, which I, which I try to do, I do it very purposefully. The pictures that I post and the order that I post them in, mm -hmm. um, is very purposeful. Um, and then just networking and getting out there. Um, I, like I said, I've got five kids, so they've got lots of friends. They have lots of parents, um, or their friends have parents that, um, are, I mean, my husband's been in this community for a long time, so he knows a lot of people. Um, so that kind of personal networking, it, it, it's not something, I'm not like a really, um, salesy type person. That's just not me. Like cold calling just gives me the heebie jeebies. There's no way I don't think I could ever cold call, but just kind of being yourself and letting people know. Um, also my home, when people come over, if you, if you come over to my house, there are pictures everywhere. And, um, so I, I've gotten business just from my friends, kids, parents coming over and saying, look at all these pictures. Who took these? And, 
Um, then, you know, that just kind of starts a conversation. And, and I'm shocked also to find a lot of people are like, we haven't had a family picture in seven years. And I'm like, no, you have to do that every year, or every other year, at least something. Um, and so I get business that way. It's kind of the impetus to get them started sometimes when they see what other people have done. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Well, it sounds like you're really living on brand and just being yourself and being open to opportunities. So that's, that's super important. So tell us a little bit about, let's start with um, being the co-owner of Camp Pixel Project. How did that get started? And tell us a little bit about that, that company. So my uh, middle daughter, Kaylee, kept bugging me and bugging me to teach her photography. And I just never had time. I was kind of overwhelmed with how do I even start teaching at the time she was probably nine or 10. I don't, and I was like, I don't even know how to start teaching a nine or 10 year old, all of this technical stuff. And I finally one day sat down to write a curriculum and I was like, um, thought, you know, what would be great is if, uh, there was a graphic design component and, um, on the other side of the woodlands, I found out that there was this graphic designer, this very talented graphic designer who was teaching her children's, uh, her daughter's brownie troops and graphics some basic graphic design skills. And so through a mutual friend, we were introduced. And um, when you get two creatives together like that, our brains were just exploding with all of the ideas. Um, and so we put a little test camp together to see, you know, can we get these concepts through to children? So it was actually spring break of last year, and we did a little test camp with my four oldest children and her two oldest children. Um, and it went awesome. Like, they picked up more than I thought they would. Oh, wow. Amazing. Um, and so we were, we were like, okay, let's do this. We're going to start the camp. So we had four camps last summer. And again, they just went better than we ever could have known. We sold out. We had a waiting list. Um, and so we've decided to do it again, of course, this summer. So this summer we've got five camps, three of the same camps we had last year. And then um, I added a new component with one of the camps. Instead of using a DSLR camera, I'm going to do a photography class with uh, smartphones. Because oh. I was missing out on a big part of the market. And there's still a lot of concepts that you can teach with just mm -hmm. a regular little very basic camera. Um, because not everyone has a DSLR camera. They're, they're pretty expensive. And if parents do have them, they sometimes don't trust their children. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I'm going to see how this camp goes, teaching with a smartphone. And then we're going to do an advanced camp for um, the returning children. That's awesome. And I love how that just, again, kind of happened really fluidly with your passion and your kids watching you or, you know, your, your middle child watching you and then wanting that and realizing that there was a need in the marketplace for other children. So I think that's right. a really great takeaway. So thank yeah. you. For and the funny that. part is my Kaylee was the one that was bugging me about photography and she loved the graphic design component oh. more than the photography. And uh, so I thought that was really interesting. It's interesting too, when the kids go in, they may go in wanting to know more about photography and they really take to the graphic design or vice versa. Um, there's a definite um, area that the kids will usually take to. And graphic design is something that not a lot of people really know like what that is. So, you know, part of our class is what is graphic design? Well, everything you see everywhere, some designer has designed it. Yeah, and what a great skill for these children to have. I mean, you know, just really fostering that creative um, genius in them. And, and I mean, I can't imagine knowing skills like that when I was in, I mean, elementary, junior high, even high school. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. It helps them with their homework. It's been fantastic. That's great. Yeah. And then last but not least, um, you also are the co-owner of Mod Mavens and Co. So tell us a little bit about that company and how, how that got started. Um, so Jennifer, who's the co-owner of Camp Pixel with me and I, um, we work really well together. And then we had another friend who is a, um, amazing copywriter and really good at social media and advertising. She had her own business and um, helping other small businesses with their social media and their advertising. And so we knew, we all knew each other. Um, well, I knew Vanessa's husband because our husbands went to high school together, but then we were all also on the same swim team together. Um, we all liked each other. We all got a, along really well. And we found that we had a lot of clients in common. Like for example, Vanessa had a client that was a uh, preschool. And she called me up because the preschool needed new pictures. Um, and so we worked on that a little bit together. And then she also called Jennifer because the preschool needed some new flyers. And so Jennifer designed those. And so we just kind of got together and we were like, you know, we love helping small businesses. We love being small business owners. Um, we want to do more with this. So we decided to start our own company. And it hasn't quite launched yet. Um, it's probably going to launch here in the next month or so. We've been working 
Um, but we already have clients together um, that we've been working on and that we've launched together. And it's been, it's been really fun because we love small businesses so much and we want to see them succeed. Because I'm so much happier being a small business owner than I ever was in the corporate world. Mm. Wow. So really taking what you're all good at and creating something together. And I think that's a great point too, because I've had partners in business and, you know, if, if you don't pick the right partners, it can be a real struggle. So would you have any advice for somebody that might be thinking about starting or bringing on a partner as far as how to, I mean, it sounds like it happened for you very organically, but did y'all have any kind of conversations about, you know, how, how that was going to work or boundaries uh, for your foot? We dove in feet first. <laughs> Um, you know, I would say the way we did it, we had worked on mutual projects together and knew that we worked well together. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say that that was, that was a good way to kind of pick who our partners were going to be is that we already had experience working together. Um, so that would, that would be my best piece of advice. Yeah, that's a good point. So do like maybe a little practice run before you go into business full fledged. Right. <laughs> that's right. Good. Exactly. That's good. That's great. Well, I would love to kind of transition into, and, and I know this is going to kind of talk about your, your three businesses as well, but what, um, one of the foundations here at the Big Heart Business Show is about giving back. You know, it's about having that philanthropy piece in your business and, and really making a difference through having a small business. So I'd love for you to talk to us a little bit about what that looks like and kind of how you live that out, because I know it's also a, a big passion of yours of, of giving back and really making a difference. Okay. So yeah, I knew, um, actually a couple years ago, I, I wanted to do some pro bono stuff. Um, because you know, 501 C threes don't have huge budgets and photography is a big part of what businesses or organizations need for their website and for their marketing and for their social media. Um, and so I actually put something out there on Facebook saying, Hey, I want to do some pro bono work. Um, does anyone know an organization that needs something? And I actually didn't get a whole lot of, um, feedback then. And I was like, well, okay. I just kind of, you know, kept doing um, what I was doing. And, um, I'd actually reached out to the Houston coalition for the homeless and sent them an email, actually sent them two emails and they never got back to me. Um, uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but last October I was, yeah, I was at a shoot, um, down in Houston cause, um, I don't go into Houston a whole lot. And so I, I, I think this was very serendipitous that I happened to be there. And I drove past what I saw was a long line of homeless people and um, tables set up and there was a brunch. Um, and I pulled over on the side of the road and I thought, this is amazing. There was this big sign that said direct hope in the background. And uh, I pulled over, immediately got on my phone and started researching them. And I was like, this is just, this is cool. I want to be part of this some way, somehow. So as soon as I got home, I emailed them and said, I'm a professional photographer. I noticed you don't have a website. I have experience building websites. Um, I noticed, I, I read all about them. They hadn't been around that long. Um, I looked on their Facebook page and I said, is there any way um, that um, you need um, pictures for our website or for your social media? And they immediately got back to me and said, yeah, we do. This would be great. So uh, within a week, I brought my entire family out there, um, and we all started volunteering, and I started taking pictures. Um, my kids loved, loved volunteering, um, and so we've made it a family affair to go out there every time that they have a brunch, which is um, almost every Sunday um, down in Houston, and so we all go out there, and I've been doing the pictures, and now we're working on the website, which hopefully will launch soon, um, and it's just been a it's an amazing charity and um, working to get homeless people off the streets one person at a time. So it's more than just a feeding group. Um, we provide mm -hmm. life um, necessities, coats, blankets, stuff like that, um, as well as the food. But then they've got some amazing stories of how they've helped people one at a time get off the streets. Wow. <clears throat> That's such an incredible story of just how you were really looking and just getting out there to, you know, basically falling in your lap. But you already had that heart to want to, to already want to serve a charity. So it made it seem like, you know, then you reached out and they were really reciprocate, you know, they reciprocated. Um, I think that's kind of amazing that you put that call out to help, you know, nonprofits with their photography and nobody responded. Why do you think that is? You know, I don't know because I've emailed um, other nonprofits about stuff and they haven't responded. Um, I don't know. And I, it was funny because I it was talking to my business partner about it. I said, yeah, I emailed such and such um, 
charity and she said, oh, it's a nonprofit, good luck getting them to respond to you. So I don't, I don't know what that means. I guess she's had that same experience too. Um, so luckily I was able to find one that really needed me and um, little did I know I needed them at the same time. So like I said, it was very serendipitous that it happened the way it did. Yeah. Well, and I think it goes back to, you know, being understaffed, you know, and, and, you know, one person right. having multiple jobs and just not being able to keep up with it. And I think that's why it's so important that we give back and we get involved. So right. can you talk to us a little bit about why is giving back to charity so important to you and, and really also getting your family and your kids involved? I mean, I think that's so amazing. You're really setting such a powerful example for them. Well, I, I think everybody has a skill, no matter what you do, if you're a CPA, if you're a designer, if you're whatever, everybody has some kind of skill that they can give to a nonprofit. Um, Direct Hope has a, a team of interior designers. When they help people um, find a home, the team of interior designers will go in and take four walls and a floor and make it into a home. Um, it's, you wouldn't think like, how can decorators help the homeless? But they can. Um, and you know, there's CPA that donates, um, their time to direct hope. I just think everybody has something and I think it's just really important, um, not only for your kids to see it, cause that's not necessarily why I started volunteering. Um, there was just something in me that, that had the, the pull to do so. And I, I told someone the other day, um, they're like, how do you have time to do this? I was like, you know, my job, I love my job and it puts, food on the table and I'm so lucky to be able to have a job I'm passionate about. I said, it, it feeds, my job feeds my belly, but direct hope feeds my soul. And she's like, okay, I get it. That's important. Mm, yeah, so. that's really powerful. And talk to us a little bit how you're incorporating, um, and I know we talked before the interview, kind of talking about how Mod Mavens and Co is really going to be kind of partnering with you on this um, initiative to help nonprofits. Okay, so they've been, uh, my two business partners have been really excited and have gotten involved in Direct Hope um, as well, not only going out there and doing the feedings, but using their skills. So um, Vanessa, who is a social media expert, um, has taken over the Instagram and Facebook accounts because, you know, the, the board of directors, they all have full-time jobs. They're all really busy and none of them were necessarily experts in social media like she was. So she, um, you know, stepped up and she decided um, she would help them with their social media. So if you look at um, their Instagram and their Facebook accounts, she's really helped with that, get the word out there and really started growing those accounts because those accounts are important because that's how we get volunteers and donors and such. Right. Um, and then, you know, we still need um, social or we still need graphics for um, social media. And so Jennifer wanted to get involved as well. So she's designed any of the really cool, awesome graphics that you see on their website. It's quite likely Jennifer has designed those. She's also designed, um, I'm doing some shoe drives and some gyms because I know athletes tend to have a lot of extra shoes around. Mm -hmm. And so she's made me a couple posters, um, really, you know, beautiful professionally designed posters that I'm going to put up at some gyms, you know, uh, prompting people to donate their old shoes. Um, and so that's just something the three of us felt really strongly about that we're really blessed to have these skills in this business. And we wanted to incorporate that kind of give back policy into our, um, into our business, because like I said, every, like I keep saying, everybody has a skill. You can do something, no matter what you do, you can do something to help an organization. Yeah. I think that's such a great point because I often hear on, especially entrepreneurs, small business owners say, well, I don't, I don't have the money. I can't, I can't give back right now. I'll start giving back when I start making, you know, X amount of money. And I think what, you know, what you're really talking about is it, I mean, money obviously is super powerful for charities and, and nonprofits, but what you're giving is, I mean, so impactful and making such a big difference. So what would you tell somebody that might be struggling with that as far as not being able to give financially and, and just trying to figure out how to really figure out where they can make that impact? Well, you know, another friend of mine that she volunteers for CASA a lot, she's an attorney. Um, she's a partner in a, at a law firm and she's really busy. Um, she put something on Facebook that really kind of stuck with me like a year ago. She said, nobody has time to volunteer. We're all busy. She's got three kids. She's a partner in a law firm. Nobody has time. You make time. You make it a priority. Um, and I think once you find, and the other thing is everybody's got some kind of charity that really speaks to them. For me, it was the homeless. Some people may love animals. So maybe, you know, a wildlife rehabilitation facility mm -hmm. or some people may have a, a special affinity for the elderly. So, you know, once a month you can go play cards for an hour with people in nursing or something. Um, everybody, you do have time. You just have to make it a priority. 
That's a great reminder. And everybody, every little bit helps. Like even just you said right. the hour. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, 40 hours of volunteer work or even going, you know, where you're going, you're, you're going every weekend with your family, you're building, I mean, you're spending a lot of time giving back and that might be kind of overwhelming to somebody, but I like the way you make it kind of simple. Like start with one hour and figure right. out if that's what you like. Is that the organization that you like? Is that the charity you like that you really want to, you know, kind of stand behind? So, right. It's, it's whatever kind of speaks to your heart. And there's a quote by Mother Teresa that I love. And it's, um, uh, if you can't feed 100 people, then feed just one. And that really kind of propels me, like, because sometimes you get out there and there's just hundreds of homeless people and you think, oh my gosh, this is really overwhelming. You know, these, there's hundreds of people sleeping on the concrete. What can we do? And, you know, you just have to kind of remind yourself, you're one person, you're busy, you've got your life, and you just kind of do what you can at that moment in your life. Yeah, such a great reminder. So when you think about all the work you do with your three businesses, with your kids, with your family, with the work that you're doing with Direct Hope, what is that big change that you really hope to make in the world? Oh, wow, that's a tough question. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, you know, I just want to live a happy life. And I, I went to a, a little seminar the other day and um, the guy was talking to small business owners and he was talking about, you know, where do you see your future self? And I'm like, I just, I didn't really have an answer because I was like, I just want to keep on the path that I'm on because I'm really happy. I'm in a business. I have a business that I love that I'm, I mean, I turned my hobby, my passion into business. I'm so, so lucky to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I found something, like I said, that feeds my soul and um, I've got these five amazing kids and everyone's healthy and happy. So um, you know, that's kind of where I see my future self. And I feel like I, I am doing what I was put here to do and what, uh, you know, I'm on the path to, to, to continue on to keep doing that. Yeah. Well, it seems like really living your mission and showing others what's possible. I mean, and making that, that impact. So I think that's, it's really amazing. Yeah. It's been really cool too, to inspire people. Um, I've got so many people that have, um, started volunteering with direct hope or even started with other charities because I, I put it out there. I've put pictures out there and I've talked about, you know, I have pictures of my children hugging homeless people and playing football with, uh, with a homeless guy. My son, I have a picture of him playing football with a, um, with the homeless gentleman and people, um, I think are really inspired by that because they know me and they know I'm not going to put my children in any danger. And, um, and they're like, you know what, that's, that's pretty cool that, that she's doing that. And maybe we should go do something. So I've, I've had a lot of friends that have started volunteering um, with direct hope and other charities because of that. Yeah. Um, and they don't even necessarily, a lot of them don't even necessarily, um, go into Houston to the brunches. A lot of them will, um, you know, do, do a little shoe drive for me and, you know, bring me all the shoes to go give to people. Or, so there's, there's lots of things that you can do. You don't necessarily have to drive into Houston every week to, to, to go to the brunches. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're really breaking the, the walls down about, you know, what it can look like and how you can get your family involved. And, um, you know, I think that is really inspiring. I know that's kind of how I learned about you doing direct hope because we're friends on Facebook and you had written, you know, you written the story and shared a bunch of pictures and it literally had me in tears because it was like, wow, not only are you doing this, but you're sharing it in such a way, not only visually, which, you know, is super impactful, but sharing the story, your why and why you care and what that looks like. And um, I think you're exactly right. That inspires people, whether it's to connect with that specific charity or to find their own passion, find something right. that makes them want to get up on a Saturday and drive an hour into town with their entire family. Like, you know, you got to have some passion behind that. Yeah. And I, I think I've always had a passion. Um, like I said, for me, the homeless have always kind of spoken to me. Um, I've always wondered, you know, what their story is. Why are you out here? Um, and that's one of the great things about Direct Hope is a lot of them will open up to you and you'll kind of start to learn their stories. And, and I've all, also always felt that there's a lot of misconceptions about the homeless. Um, you know, they're just lazy. They've got two legs. Well, no, you don't really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there, there's a, there's a lot of struggle and maybe they do have two legs and you know they are able to work but there's a lot um, of, of um, internal struggle that you don't see um, you know a lot of depression and just you know the lack of motivation that comes along with depression and substance abuse and stuff and so we're just trying to give them hope there's um, one particular guy um, that is like one of direct hope's biggest success stories and I wasn't around when um, when they were working with him, but the story is pretty awesome. Um, when they met him, he was living under a bridge. He was really just cynical and angry and um, had issues with substances. And 
he said he would see Direct Hope out there every week. And he was like, what are these people doing out here? Why do they keep coming back? And, you know, he was like, oh, maybe they're here this week. They're not going to be here next week. And then they kept coming back and kept coming back. And long story short is they gave him hope. And he now is employed and he has his own apartment. And it's because of seeing people. It's because of the hope. It's not, I mean, they're not, no one in Direct Hope is a professional social worker. It's just going out there and talking to people and giving them the hope that they need. Um, And it sounds like that consistency that you're not just going to be fly by night and come and put a bandaid on the situation. You're really there to make a difference and make that impact. So awesome. All right. Well, let's, um, let's, we're going to move into the lightning round. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, So the first one is what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, you're asking me all these tough questions. Put me on the spot. Um, (laughs) The best piece of advice. Let's get to the next question while I think about that. <laughs> All right. Um, you shared one with us, so I don't know if that's your favorite, but what is your favorite quote, mantra, or Bible verse? So I do like that Mother Teresa one a lot. There's a similar one by Andy Stanley that says, do for one what you wish you could do for others. Um, and then there's another one that's kind of always stuck by me, and it's, um, if you find yourself heading in the wrong direction, God allows you turns. Mm, I, so I saw that on a church um, billboard once, and I was like, that's, so true. That's so awesome. Yeah. And um, what book would you recommend to our audience and why? Okay, so I'm a total book nerd, so I could talk about books for about an hour. <laughs> uh, my favorite book, I'd say my favorite two, um, and both of these books, I cried when they were over, not because they were sad, but because I was so sad I wouldn't be with those characters anymore. If that makes oh. any sense. I don't know if anyone's ever felt that way. Um, one is, of course, To Kill a Mockingbird. I finished that book and just because I was going to miss Scout so much. Um, and I still think about Scout. I don't know. It's, it's just crazy that that character affected me so much. Um, and the other one that I cried when it was over was the book Memoirs of a Geisha. I didn't want that book to ever end. That was just amazing. Um, so I'd say those are probably my two favorite books. Gotcha. Awesome. And uh, what is one thing you do every day that helps you stay in action towards your mission? Um... Well, you know, I work from home and I, I, I do work every day, even on vacation. Um, and whether it's just, you know, it may just be answering emails, it may be um, an hour here, an hour there. Um, but I'm very invested in what I do and um, I put a little bit of myself into it every day, I would say. Okay. So just having that consistency. Yes. Cool. Yeah. And then do you, do you have some best advice that you can share with us? Did anything pop into your mind? Um. Well, you know, when I started the business, I, I didn't um, just quit everything I was doing and start my photography business. I worked very hard at it um, and had it on the side while I maintained my other business just to make sure that I was good at it and I was going to be able to succeed. Um, and so I, really, I would tell anyone to do that. Don't quit your day job until you, until you know that you can um, succeed at something you're doing. But then, you know, the other advice is, you know, all your passion, you know, if you are really that passionate about something, you're going to be able to make it a success. Yeah, that's awesome. Definitely living that out. Well, thank you so much for sharing everything with us, Tracy. I just, I really just admire you so much with everything that you've going on, three businesses and five children and the, the impact that you're really making with Direct Hope and how you, it seems like you dive into everything with two feet and your full heart. And, you know, I think it is such an inspiration for other you know, moms and women and just people out there about how we can really, you know, I love your, your stance on, you know, we all have a skill set and, and we're able to give that back. And I think, you know, keeping it simple like that is, is really going to impact and give, you know, that ripple effect to so many others. So I just really admire what you're doing and just thank you for taking the time today to share that with me and, and our audience. So, okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Get out there. Follow me your passion. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And what's the best place for our audience to find you? Um, so my website is spryart.com. That's S P R Y, um, art.com. And so that would be, you know, of course you can link to my contact me page and find me that way and link to the Facebook page and all that. So that's probably the best way. Okay. Awesome. And we'll definitely obviously make sure we include all the links in the show notes so okay. we can find you and find direct hope and your other Perfect. businesses. So, great. all right. Well, thank you so much. And until next time, we'll see you on the next show. Bye y'all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Big Heart Business Show. 
If you know someone that could benefit from this information, I would so appreciate it if you shared the love. And make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave a review. One last thing, if you're ready to fuel your big heart business with a consistent flow of cash and clients, head on over to kerryshepherd.com forward slash free gift to access a very special video series I created just for you. And don't forget, we are changing the world one big heart business at a time.